Okay, I have a brand new effect to share with you today. It involves 18 cards, as you can see, and I have various value suits and colors. So let's go ahead and just mix these just in case you have a photographic memory. Okay, so I'm going to do a Klondike shuffle like this. This is where you take the top and bottom off as one. Okay, um, and then maybe we'll follow that up with another great shuffle. It's called the Mange shuffle. Maybe we'll do an over, under, over, under, okay? Now for this particular routine, you can have one or two spectators. I'm going to assume I have two spectators here, spectator A and spectator B, okay? So what I'm going to do here is just uh, deal out the cards into two piles and I'll have spectator A decide which uh, pile they would like to work with. So spectator A, which of these two would you like? The one on the right? Okay, we give it to you. And then spectator B, you get that one. Okay, so since spectator A got to choose which pile, why don't we begin working with spectator B? So spectator B, what we're going to do here is deal out the cards into three piles with random stacking decided by you. It really is a free choice. How would you like these stacked? The bottom one first, top left, top right. Okay, let me do another one of those just to make sure these cards are well mixed according to your requests. Top right, bottom, top left, okay. I don't know if you're keeping track of all the different ways you can stack these, but you can choose different stackings or the same if you like. What would you like now? Left, right, and then center. Okay, are you happy with the mixing? Okay, set that right there. Uh, spectator B. Sorry, Spectator A, apologies. Uh, same choices here. How would you like these stacked? Center first, top right, top left. Okay, uh, what about now? Sorry, I'm making a mess here. <laughs> top right, top left, then center. Now, I'm speaking to you as the performer. Uh, the stacking here is truly random. Okay, you need to know that. I'm not controlling the stacking in any way. And in fact, we'll go ahead, Spectator A. You want the center, top right, top left. In fact, we can perform this dealing into three piles for each of these spectators as many times as they like with random stacking decided by them. That's the important thing, okay? So I think we were just working with Spectator A. So maybe we'll turn to Spectator B for their final decisions here. Okay, I'm going to deal out three piles one more time. That's one option. Or I can just push off cards from the top, three, three cards at a time, and then just create three piles that way, okay? So what would you prefer? Push off sets of three, or deal them out into three piles? You want them dealt out into three piles again? Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's what we'll do. That's what you asked for. Okay, and then spectator B, the same choices here. Would you like me to just push off triples and put those down or deal out like we did for spectator B? You want me to just push off, okay? Now note to you as a performer, spectator can choose either one of these choices. They truly, truly can. Okay, so off to the side, I actually have a written prediction. And I don't know what you think we could possibly have predicted with all of these free random choices made by each one of you. Okay, so here's, here's what it says. One of you will create three piles, each with one club, one heart, one spade. <laughs> okay, well, let's just check to see if either one of you did that. Okay, Spectator A, what did you do? Oh, that's interesting. There you go. So there's a a club, spade, and a heart. So you may be the, the one mentioned there, we'll find out. Okay, there we go, another uh, set of club, heart, and spade. You're doing well. And then here, right here, oh yes indeed, it looks like you are the winner here. Here's another perfect set of three of the suits, club, heart, and spade, okay. Well, what about poor spectator B? What have we predicted for that? person. Well, the other, which I'm assuming is you, Spectator B, will create three piles, each with different card values. Well, let's just check that. Do you have different card values? Okay, those are different. 
those are different and those are different that is amazing and notice that we have repeats here right we have two hearts and two diamonds so spectator b could not satisfy the first part only spectator a could and then for spectator b is it true that they got three piles of different cards each they did what's that oh yeah you're right there's more to the prediction than just what i read there okay what's the rest of the prediction here um let's see oh it's not just different values that's just part of it i see different value lengths what's that mean oh that's right every card value has either three letters four letters or five letters in their names there's no way that your cards satisfy that as well so let's just check it out so let's see two two three letters in its name nine has four letters and three t-h-r-e-e -E, five letters uh, six has three four of course has four letters f-o-u-r queen is five a five letter name uh ace has three jack has four and seven s-e-v-e-n has five <laughs> that is absolutely beyond belief wow okay so how did we do that okay it's really easy to do let me just show you really quickly here okay so you so what we need here is okay so these are for spectator going off the screen spectator a and these are spectator b okay so let me just show you what you need to do like i said it just takes a couple of minutes so for spectator a if you remember they had one of each suit right so you just you gather up the suits first okay so we'll put like the clubs together uh, hearts together and the spades together that's the first thing okay so we'll go ahead. and the fact you can randomly stack these little piles there okay um, now for spectator B you can kind of guess the division we're going to have a three card three cards with three letters in their names so they are and then for four letters in their names these here and it doesn't matter how you stack those sets of three and then these are the three set of five letter card names okay just stack those however you like okay and so from here all you need to do is just deal out into three piles so I'll, I'll set it up for uh, spectator a okay now with, with those three piles you leave one alone and then for the other one all you do is you move one card to the bottom for the other one you move two cards to the bottom and then you just randomly stack these okay so spectator a's little packet is ready uh, you do the same thing for spectator B, just do that the exact same operation. Maybe we'll leave that one alone. We'll move one to the bottom and then two to the bottom. Random stack here, it doesn't matter. Okay. And then from here, all I did for the preparation is I just randomly stacked these and I performed one Klondike shuffle. Now, the only reason I did that is it puts spectator A's cards in an alternating relationship with spectator b that's the key okay so if you prefer not to do the klondike you could just take those two piles and do like one from each like take one from the right one from the left right left right left and build it up that way that would work just fine okay so this is the kind of packet that we began with at the very beginning okay and so what this is let me just explain uh, we have interlaced two three by three Latin squares. That's what we've done here, okay? So each packet represents a three by three Latin square, and it has some incredible properties that we used here. Uh, but now, it, now that it's set up that way, since spectator A's cards alternate with spectator B's, when we go to deal into two piles, it's like we just pull them apart again. That's all we're doing. Now, it is true I did a false mixing at the beginning by doing a Klondike and then a Mange, okay? So that either preserves the order as is or reverses the order of everything, which won't hurt anything actually, okay? So the Klondike and Mange at the very beginning is optional. It's just some mixing that helps convince the spectator that the cards are scrambled, right? Since we showed the cards to them. 
Okay. And then from there, you just do everything that I did. You know, you just deal out the cards, you know, into two piles and go from there. Follow the exact steps. And this is going to work perfectly. Now, what's really powerful about this is you can choose different cards to reveal. So I chose to reveal clubs, hearts, and spades, one being in each set of three for one of the spectators. And then the other set of three characteristics was uh, cards have either three or four letters in their names. Okay. And that was the characteristic for the other spectators sets of three. Okay. Well, now you know the secret. So we're using essentially a power of Latin squares here. And so we just interlaced perfectly two three by three Latin squares. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the absolute Math Magic channel.